the second best unit, maybe the first actually. We will see. But linebacker, this this is a uh, a good one, maybe one a lot of people were skeptical about heading into last year, and now everyone's just can't wait to see these guys take the field again. So we have key losses. We got Jonathan Sutherland, six year player, team <laughs> captain, played a lot better at linebacker than he did safety. I'll give him that. Uh, key returners, two big ones. Abdul Carter, 56 tackles, six and a half sacks, 10 and a half tackles for loss as a true freshman last year. Didn't even, wasn't even a full time starter really and got ejected from the first game of the season in the first quarter. So, uh, pretty impressive numbers considering the volume of play. Curtis Jacobs, kind of the veteran leader of the group now, 52 tackles, four sacks, seven and a half tackles for loss. Moving back to the Sam position where he was a lot better in 2021. Kind of struggled a little bit at the will in 2022. I think he's in for a big year going back there. And then uh, newcomers, Tony Rojas, top 100 recruit from last year. And then Kevion Keys, another four-star recruit. Timur Robinson also in that list coming off an injury. So not sure how much we'll see of him moving forward this year at least. Yeah, I mean, how big was it Curtis Jacobs came back? Mm -hmm. yeah. I probably would have went third or fourth round if you ask me um and i think i don't remember if i asked him or asked one of his teammates but they said he got like a fourth round grade from nfl draft guys so um certainly that's not acceptable to him so he's coming back with something to prove to try to get a little higher in the draft um and just pairing him with carter and those uh four two five packages our prowler package that's going to be huge i mean those guys are absolute studs um and then yeah, Rojas learning from them, who is on his way to being the next one of them. It's just that room got loaded out of nowhere. Yeah, it did. It's not like even he was there for what five weeks just before the blue white game and made a hell of a lot of plays in that already as a basically a high school senior. So Rojas really came strong. Um, so how does that four two five package deal with kind of weakness maybe in the interior of the defensive line? The can the Carter and Jacobs make up for that perceived weakness? I mean, I'd say so. The more you use the 425 is more obvious passing downs, or if you want those disguised blitzes, or you're slanting or something. So you're doing something with the defensive line to help them out in those situations that you're losing someone from the box. Um, but, like, we got two of the best linebackers in the country running it with us, and you kind of saw more throughout the year as they did it more with those two guys. They got comfortable, and they kind of knew where the other one was going. And it's, it's all a feel thing. So we're bringing these guys back, and they have the experience in these packages that I, they're going to be able to make up for it. As anything, they're going to get burned one or twice. It's just it's natural to happen. But overall, this is that's probably their best package as long as they find that guy to run the prowler position. I will say this might be the best linebacker duo in the country. Uh, Clemson has a really good one too. But I remember on three did – they're like top 10 in every position rankings back in the spring. I think Abdul Carter was two or three and Jacobs was 10. Yeah. So to have two top 10 linebackers in the country, according to a very reputable website. Uh, yeah, that, that that's pretty good. Really excited to see these two guys now coexisting instead of kind of playing instead of the other one, uh, moving Jacobs back to Sam, which, you know, I don't play Diaz. That's hard in the middle of the season. Just move around your whole personnel, you know, move guys back around. So just getting them back where they're comfortable is really big. So then kind of looking at the depth chart, obviously. Mm -hmm. At the will, we have Carter starting. Keon Wiley, a retro freshman, didn't see much of him last year. I, he's listed as the top backup right now. We'll see if that changes. The Mike position, the middle linebacker, uh, interesting here, I guess. Tyler Elston, I think you could put an or with Kobe King. We'll see which one of them kind of emerges as the the starter. I don't think there's going to be a like a fool's time starter here. I think these two guys continue to rotate. Both steady. It's not, you know, they don't wow you off the page really, but that's the one position I think you're looking at. And then Sam, obviously Curtis Jacobs starts. And I have Tony Rojas being the number two instead of uh, – Dom DeLuca. I know Dom DeLuca just went on. What the fuck? <laughs> I know, no, but I, Tony Rojas did too much. I think in the spring, everyone's talking about him. I, I do expect him to be the number two guy by the time the season rolls around. 
I understand where you're coming from, but I mean, we really can't discount what DeLuca did last year. Like, I know, I'm sure a lot of Penn State fans are going to laugh and roll their eyes, but in all seriousness, the guy was a walk-on last year, and he came out and played his tail off. I mean, we he didn't do anything wrong. I'm sure he was a little undersized, probably had a little bit um, less athleticism than a lot of the guys he was playing against, but that guy fought his tail off every play, was always in the right position, was always making key tackles. That guy's going to play, whether we like it or not as Penn State fans. That guy's going to play. <laughs> All right. I mean, we will Does anybody see. not like it that he's going to play? Or what? I, I, I don't. It's not that I hate him. I just think Rojas, there's a lot more upside there, and the staff is not going to be afraid yeah. to burn his red shirt. This I mean, is the, yeah. Go ahead. I just – I don't know. I, the guy has experience. He got voted a team captain. He's going to be the uh, agent zero now. Like, there's no way this guy's not playing. So that's a special teams captain, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Just so we're clear. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's – oh, God. <laughs> I, 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 is going to play. I, I mean, I only went too deep here. I didn't go to the three – you could put an or there. I'm just telling you from the way they talk about Rojas to what we saw in the blue and white game, and we'll see how camp goes. I just don't – they're going to give him chances on the field. He's really good. Yes, he's very, very good. Um, last year's special teams captain was your key loss, was Jonathan Sutherland, right? Yeah, well, they didn't really lose anyone else from linebacker, so I don't know what you want to put Yeah, there. okay, I don't know. But, like, <laughs> you know, they're, they're, it means something to be a captain. It does. <laughs> I don't know what position you play. Um, but, to, okay, so here's, like, the mic is, again, like the one potential weak spot going into the, the yeah. defense, right? And, and it was last year, and I think they, they did fine. But that's why I was kind of asking about, you know, the, the, that other package, the, like the more nickel type package. Can you get away with just two of the 10 best linebackers in the country and then make up for it with a prowler or a nickel back or however that is right? in run situations, right? Where your middle linebacker is, you know, one of the two or three most important positions on the field in that case. And that time. Yeah. I mean, I think throughout the year, if Rojas is as at, is as advertised, that Mike position is going to kind of flip around a little bit. We're going to see a lot of Carter and Jacobs, obviously, but if Rojas is truly the third best linebacker in that room and he's ready to play, they're going to find a way to make it comfortable that they could get Carter, Jacobs, and Rojas on the field together. And I'm not I probably mean putting Carter at Mike and Rojas to the will, but they're going to find a way to do it. I mean, it's just, it's Franklin's nature. It's Diaz for sure. You're going to put your best players on the field in those most important games. They're going to rotate guys. They're going to get experience everywhere, but the games on the line, you're going to have your best players in the game and I they'll find a way to do that. Yeah, I, I do agree with that. I, maybe Carter is the mic at some point. I don't know, but uh, o- overall, I like this group. The two starters, obviously very good. Rojas, Dom DeLuca, nice backups. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. There's there's not much more to say here. The, these two guys are kind of what will help take this defense from really good to elite, I think, especially Carter. If Carter has a season like Micah Parsons started to have towards the end of 2019 and then we didn't get to see the finishing product in 2020 – I, if he has a season like that, I mean, this is we're talking one of the best defenses in the country, and it, it's not really close. They might be two or three in the country if he comes to that point. I think we kind of look at this group as we looked at our DBs last year, where if we're going to go into Ohio State and beat Michigan at home, we needed the DBs to, or I guess last year is reversed, but we needed the DBs to kind of win us those games and make those giant plays. And I mean, they did, they did well, but obviously it didn't work out for either of those games last year. If we're going to win those games this year, I think this is the position that's going to make those crazy turnovers. They're going to have those hectic yeah. plays, cause havoc, get a crucial sack, or cause a forced fumble or something. But I think it's going to come from this group especially. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, the front seven.